Welcome to my channel. Today, I'm going to share a story about George's experience with his cheating wife. Please help by subscribing and liking the video. My wife Alice and I had been married for three months when she mysteriously disappeared. When I finally saw her again, I discovered that Alice had married my good friend. I was on a business trip to Seattle when I coincidentally ran into my long unseen friend, Tom. Tom and I were high school classmates and used to go on road trips together. However, over a year ago, we had a car accident that resulted in a fatality, and since then, I had stopped driving and traveling as much. After meeting Tom, he insisted on taking me back to his house for drinks. George, we haven't seen each other in over half a year. Today, I must play the role of a gracious host, he said. Besides, my house is nearby, and you can also meet my wife, you're getting married? I congratulated him with a smile and followed Tom back to his house. But what I didn't expect was the shock that awaited me. As soon as I entered the living room, I saw a wedding photo hanging on the wall. The bride in the photo was none other than my wife Alice, who had been missing since three months into our marriage. A year ago, Alice and I had finally tied the knot. However, just three months into our marriage, she disappeared mysteriously, along with six million dollars that I had in the bank. I went crazy searching for her, but after a year had passed, I still had no clue. And now, I unexpectedly encountered her at Tom's house. Brother. Is this your wife? I stared at Alice in the wedding photo, unable to believe my eyes. This is the wedding photo of my wife and me. Isn't it obvious? Tom proudly replied. Are you envious of my beautiful wife? I got married to her. Do you envy me a bit? I awkwardly smiled and didn't say a word. Tom personally went to the kitchen and prepared a table full of dishes. While I was puzzled and lost in my thoughts, Alice suddenly walked in through the door, carrying a bag. Honey, I'm back, her familiar voice, so intimate and gentle. I stood in the living room, unable to resist peeking towards the hallway. And in that moment, when I saw Alice, I was certain that she was my missing wife, Alice, however, to my surprise, Alice pretended not to recognize me and politely smiled at me. Then, she turned to Tom and asked, Honey, do we have guests at home, oh? I forgot to introduce you. This is my buddy George, Tom introduced Alice to me. Alice then came out with a fruit platter and greeted me, hello, George. I'm Tom's wife, Diana, what, Diana, I was stunned for a moment before it finally clicked. Alice had mentioned to me before that she had a twin sister named Diana. They looked very similar, but I never expected to meet her in Seattle. Since she didn't recognize me, I didn't immediately reveal my identity. Soon, Tom prepared a table full of dishes, and we enjoyed drinks and conversations late into the night. Tom was heavily intoxicated, and I supported him to the entrance of the master bedroom. Diana, wearing a camisole, opened the door. The scene almost made me have a nosebleed, I have to admit that Diana is really beautiful. She, like her sister, had a tall and curvaceous figure, with a prominent bust that seemed ready to burst out from under the camisole. It made my blood boil. In my drunken haze, I mistook the woman in front of me, wearing the nightdress, for my missing wife Alice. Alice, I lunged towards Diana and buried myself in her embrace, my hands and feet wandering mischievously on her perky buttocks. I gently rubbed them. George, you're drunk. Let me help you back to your room, Diana said calmly without getting angry. Blushing, she assisted me to the guest room. I pretended to be drunk and murmured softly in her arms. Alice, please don't leave me. Didn't we promise to be together forever, George, I am not Alice, Diana replied, still composed, showing no signs of the previous encounter. I became even more puzzled. Could it be that this woman in front of me, who looked exactly like my missing wife, Alice, was not her twin sister Diana, if she wasn't Alice's sister, then who could she be? And why was she called Diana, could it be possible that there were three identical women in the world, this whole situation seemed increasingly strange. I pretended to be drunk and fell asleep on the bed. Once Diana left, I quickly got up. I'm curious to see what this woman is up to. I cautiously opened the door. After confirming that Diana had gone back to her room, I stealthily made my way to the living room entrance. When Diana came home earlier, she casually hung her bag on the coat rack by the door. 
Her identification card must be inside, and I wanted to verify something. I reached the entrance, found Diana's bag hanging in the wardrobe, and carefully searched through it. As expected, I found her identification card inside. Diana, Seattle Union Lake District 211. This. Isn't this Alice's address? I was astonished. It was confirmed that this woman named Diana was indeed the younger sister of my wife, Alice. But why would she pretend not to recognize me? Could there be something hidden about Diana? The more I thought about it, the stranger it seemed. I pretended to be drunk and lay in bed, pretending to be fast asleep. In the midst of my contemplation, I heard a click as the door to the master bedroom was pushed open. I hurriedly put Diana's ID back into her bag and quickly approached the kitchen door. Diana emerged from the bedroom wearing that sexy camisole dress. When she saw me, she paused for a moment, clearly surprised. She then asked suspiciously, George, what are you doing here? Oh, I was thirsty and came to get some water. I pretended to be calm and pointed towards the kitchen. The cups are in the first cabinet, Diana said as she took small steps towards me. Her curvaceous figure emitted a captivating fragrance, filling my nostrils and arousing my imagination. Do both sisters use the same perfume? While pretending to drink water, Diana suddenly turned and looked at me. She asked, Brother-in-law, has my sister still not been found? This sudden question almost made me spit out the water I had just swallowed. You recognize me? I frowned and stared at her, trying to find any trace of suspicion in her dark eyes. But I was too naive. Diana's dark eyes were calm and showed no ripples. I knew it was you a long time ago, Diana smiled, her lips slightly pursed. I just didn't expect it to be such a coincidence that you and Tom would be friends, why didn't you reveal your identity to me? I questioned her. Well, you didn't say you knew me either, Diana shrugged and asked in return. Cough, she had a point there. I didn't immediately acknowledge her either. Oh well, I won't dwell on these matters. After finishing my water, I quickly asked Diana. You and your sister are twins, you grew up together. Where do you think she could have gone, you're asking me? Diana raised an eyebrow, staring at me with suspicion on her face. She's your wife, and you don't know. How could I possibly know, dumbfounded by Diana's retort, I stood in the kitchen, staring at her in a daze. After Diana finished pouring water, she prepared to return to her room. Just at that moment, the sound of the front door opening interrupted our conversation. We both turned our heads to see Tom stumbling through the entrance, looking disheveled and exhausted. Tom! You're back, Diana exclaimed, rushing over to support him. She glanced at me with a hint of concern in her eyes before focusing her attention on her intoxicated husband. I watched as Diana helped Tom to the living room couch, trying to make him as comfortable as possible. She grabbed a glass of water and handed it to him, urging him to drink. Tom obediently took a few sips, his gaze wandering around the room. Diana. Alice, Tom slurred, his voice barely audible. I miss her. Where is she? I could see the pain and confusion in Tom's eyes as he uttered those words. It was clear that he was still grappling with the loss of his wife, Alice, who had mysteriously disappeared. Diana sighed softly, her expression filled with empathy. I miss her too, Tom. We're doing everything we can to find her. We won't give up, Tom nodded weakly, his eyes welling up with tears. I. I can't bear the thought of her being gone forever, Diana sat down next to Tom. Wrapping her arms around him in a comforting embrace. We'll find her, Tom. We'll bring her back home, as I watched the interaction between Diana and Tom, a pang of guilt washed over me. I had momentarily forgotten the gravity of the situation and the pain that both of them were going through. I realized that my earlier actions were inappropriate and disrespectful to the bond between these two siblings. Feeling remorseful, I quietly retreated from the kitchen and made my way back to the guest room. I needed to reflect on my behavior and find a way to support Tom and Diana in their search for Alice, without causing any further harm. It was clear that there were still many unanswered questions surrounding Alice's disappearance, and I vowed to assist in any way I could to uncover the truth and bring her back to her loved ones. I stood at the doorway of the kitchen, staring intently at Diana's graceful figure. Once again, doubts arose in my mind, is this person really Diana, or is it Alice? 
I must investigate and find out for sure. Alice ran away with six million from me, and I can't just let it slide, can I? After drinking some water, I returned to my bedroom and lay on the bed, tossing and turning, unable to fall asleep for a long time. I reminisced about the moments I spent with Alice, the little things we shared. We were so close and happy back then. I never expected her to silently take the money and run away. In a daze, I drifted into dreamland. The night passed without a word. I slept until late in the morning, when the sun was already high in the sky. I still felt a bit groggy, probably because I had drunk quite a bit with Tom yesterday. A sudden urge to urinate hit me, and I quickly got up from the bed and rushed to the bathroom outside. As I pushed open the door, I was about to turn on the faucet when I noticed a hazy and enchanting figure behind the glass door next to me. When I focused my eyes and looked more carefully, I realized it was Diana taking a shower. Through the misty glass, I could vaguely see the graceful contours of her bewitching figure, the perky and full bosom, the voluptuous buttocks, and the slender, fair thighs, all of which captivated my gaze. For a moment, I was completely mesmerized. She's truly beautiful, just as graceful as Alice, I shivered. I knew it was wrong to peek at Diana like this, so I quickly put on my pants, quietly retreated to the guest room, and left without a sound. She was Diana after all, how could I entertain inappropriate thoughts about her? How could I face Tom in the future, the more I thought about it, the more I felt remorseful. I got dressed and left Tom's house. I was in Seattle for work, and in the afternoon, I spent three hours negotiating with a client before finally securing the order. I planned to return home tomorrow. However, even though I had finally found Diana, I was still unwilling to give up the opportunity to find Alice. After all, she had swindled six million from me. As I squatted on the side of the road, pondering how to find an excuse to go back to Tom's house, my phone rang with a cheerful ringtone. It was a call from Tom. George. Why did you leave? Diana told me everything, what a coincidence, he said. We're actually brothers-in-law. According to seniority, I should even call you brother-in-law, have you finished your work? Come to my place quickly, and let's celebrate with a few drinks, Tom invited. I was just worrying about how to find a reason to go back, but I didn't expect Tom's call to come at such a fortuitous moment. All right, I'll be there as soon as I'm done here, I replied with a smile, hanging up the phone and rushing to the supermarket to buy two bottles of good wine. When I arrived at Tom's house, Diana and Tom were busy cooking in the kitchen. Hey, brother-in-law, Tom greeted me with a smile. Yeah, I've been busy, I responded. I placed the wine on the dining table and went to the kitchen to take a look. I picked up the two completed dishes and returned to the dining room. Due to being busy with work, I hadn't even had time to eat lunch. Now, my stomach was growling, and I couldn't resist picking up a piece of meat with my chopsticks and putting it in my mouth. Hmm. I chewed and felt a familiar taste. This was Alice's cooking. I was shocked. Some twins may look exactly alike, but surely their cooking habits couldn't be the same, right? Both Alice and Diana's dishes tasted the same, how could that be possible? In that moment, a bold idea rushed into my mind. Could it be that the person in front of me isn't Diana at all, but Alice? But how could that be? I clearly saw her ID card yesterday, and it had Diana's information on it. Lost in thought. I was snapped back to reality when Tom came out with the two dishes. Brother-in-law, why are you just standing there? Pour the wine, let's start drinking. Let Diana finish the rest of the dishes, Tom said, jokingly. I never thought I would be your brother-in-law, I replied with a smile. Hee hee, we were already buddies, and now we're even closer, Tom grinned. He leaned towards me, whispering in a mysterious tone, brother-in-law, when I married Diana, neither you nor Alice were there, I heard that she disappeared and hasn't been found yet, but I'm curious, do the two sisters really look that similar? Tom asked. Hearing Tom's question, I instinctively glanced towards the kitchen. Looking at Diana's enchanting figure, my heart was filled with mixed emotions. To be honest, the two sisters didn't just look alike, they were identical. Even the butterfly birthmark on their backs was the same. With that in mind, I smiled and said to Tom seriously, they do look very much alike. You'll find out when I find Alice, well, it's strange. Where could Alice possibly go? 
Tom sighed, taking a sip of wine. Brother-in-law, don't worry too much. Our whole family will help you find her, Alice is a living person. She couldn't have had an accident. Maybe she just felt overwhelmed and went out by herself to relax, he suggested. I stared at Tom, feeling a sense of frustration. Relaxing, who goes out to relax and ends up taking away six million, who goes for some time off and disappears for half a year without contacting their own husband. I couldn't help but think that this wasn't relaxation, it was an escape with the money. However, I didn't say what I was thinking out loud. After all, Diana was there. If I spoke ill of her sister in front of her, we might end up fighting. Yeah, Alice always said she was tired from work. Maybe she went out to relax, I sighed, going along with his words. We began drinking after dinner, and Tom and Alice, the newlyweds, quickly became affectionate, running off to the bedroom together. I sat in the living room, bored, playing with my phone and scrolling through the news. Sometimes, I even thought that it would be better if Alice had been robbed and killed by a criminal, rather than disappearing without a trace. Be quiet, brother-in-law is still outside. Be careful not to let her hear, Tom warned. As I mindlessly scrolled through my phone, I suddenly heard a seductive sound coming from the bedroom. Listening to Diana's heavy breathing, ripples of thought surged through my mind. These two sisters were truly twins, even the sounds they made during intimate moments were so similar. While I marveled at the similarities between the two sisters, I couldn't shake the feeling that something was off. I thought to myself, they look too alike, not just in their birthmarks in cooking, but even in the sounds they make during intimate moments. Could it be that they're not really twins, but the same person, as this idea emerged, a chill ran down my spine. Instinctively, I walked towards the master bedroom. I had been with Alice for over half a year. And I knew her body better than anyone. Even the smallest scar, I knew it like the back of my hand. I remembered a small scar on the inside of her thigh, about the size of a toothpick. It was from when she accidentally scratched herself while climbing a tree as a child. If I could see that scar, then I could determine if this person was really Alice or not. I reached the doorway of the bedroom, only to find the door slightly ajar, not completely closed. I quietly peeked inside through the crack, and what I saw shocked me. The two of them were entwined, completely naked, engaged in passionate lovemaking. The scene was too ambiguous and had a strong impact. It made my blood boil, and a heated sensation surged through my abdomen. Darling, I love you so much, Tom said as he held Diana's slender and fair back, wishing he could merge her into his body. He buried his entire head deep in Diana's bosom, breathing in her intoxicating scent. However, due to their provocative position, their bodies completely blocked my view, and I couldn't see if there was a scar on Diana's inner thigh. I stared for a while, getting more and more excited, but then decided against it. When I returned to my bedroom, the heated sensation continued to boil inside me. I was contemplating whether to go to the bathroom to relieve myself when I received a call from my good friend Frank. George, I've found out the information you asked me to investigate. Tell me, I said, feeling somewhat excited. In order to find Alice, I had asked Frank to inquire about her family situation in her hometown. I didn't expect Frank to be so efficient and call me back so quickly. Based on the information I gathered, there are no twins in the Goo family. Alice is the only child, he said. What? My head exploded with a loud bang. I never expected this result. If Alice didn't have a twin sister, then who was the person next door, engaging in passionate activities with Tom? My hands trembled, and I was filled with anger, wishing I could rush over and kill this adulterous couple. But just as I was about to lose control, Frank's voice came through the earpiece again. However, I heard another piece of information. What information? Spit it out. I gritted my teeth. Frank sighed and continued, but there are rumors in their village that Alice did have a twin sister. Ha! Huh? I thought to myself, what kind of joke is this? The people in their village can't even get their story straight. Are they professional liars or something? I couldn't help but curse silently in my mind and question Frank, so, what did you really find out? Does Alice have a twin sister or not? Well, you should know, Frank said helplessly. You're Alice's husband. Shouldn't you know about her background? 
I was furious. If I knew, would I have asked you to investigate? Forget it, that's all. I'll take care of the rest myself. I hung up the phone and lay in bed, tossing and turning, unable to sleep. Honestly, I had been dating Alice for half a year and married her for three months. I had only visited her hometown once, so I didn't know much about her family or whether she had a twin sister. After all, Alice had run away with six million of my money, so how could I trust her? The more I thought about it, the angrier I became. I got up from the bed, determined to go to the next room and personally check Diana's inner thigh to see if there was a scar. I got dressed and quietly made my way to the door of the next bedroom. To my surprise, the bedroom door wasn't fully closed but slightly ajar. Tom was already exhausted and sound asleep on the bed. Diana lay next to him, covered only by a thin blanket due to the heat. Her long and fair legs were shamelessly exposed. And now, all I had to do was walk over and take a quick look at her inner thigh to clear up all the doubts. With that in mind, I no longer hesitated and carefully pushed open the master bedroom door. As I gazed at the two figures lying on the bed, my breath became rapid. Moonlight streamed through the window, illuminating Diana's alluring body. She was like a pure lily, emitting a captivating fragrance that constantly drew my gaze. I walked over and stood beside the bed, my eyes fixated on her. With trembling hands, I reached out my right hand and grabbed the blanket covering her. Slowly, I unveiled it. As my movements quickened, her fair and slender legs became increasingly exposed to the air. Just as I was about to succeed, Tom yawned and, in a drowsy state, attempted to sit up. I was startled, and an adrenaline rush shot through me. Instinctively, I sprinted towards the exit. To avoid being detected, I had taken off my shoes before entering, allowing my bare feet to make contact with the silent floor tiles. My heart pounded nervously, and it wasn't until I reached my own bedroom that I finally let out a sigh of relief. Not long after, I could hear the sound of running water coming from the bathroom where Tom was. It turned out he had woken up to use the toilet, narrowly missing catching me in the act. If he had caught me, I wouldn't have been able to explain myself even if my whole body were covered in mouths. This method clearly wouldn't work. I resigned myself to lying in bed and trying to sleep, tossing and turning until the early hours of the morning. The next day, I was still in a daze when I felt someone pushing me. Who's there? I rubbed my eyes and saw Diana standing by the bed, her face filled with anxiety. What's wrong? I yawned, curious about her urgency. Brother-in-law, the faucet in the bathroom is broken. Can you help me replace it? Diana was wearing a loose-fitting oversized t-shirt. The design cleverly concealed most of her from the front, but from the side, the loose sleeves revealed her alluring curves. The hem of the shirt was also short, making it easy to accidentally expose herself with slightly larger movements. At this moment, Diana was hunched over, urging me to get up. I sat up, still groggy, and was immediately greeted by the enticing fullness beneath her neckline. Gulp. I couldn't help but swallow hard, my gaze fixated on her seductive form. Sure, I'll go help you change the faucet. I nodded instinctively. I followed Diana to the bathroom, still yawning. The shower faucet had cracked and was spraying water everywhere. I approached and dismantled the damaged faucet, intending to replace it with a new one. However, due to the high water pressure, both Diana and I ended up getting soaked. After much effort, I finally managed to install the new faucet. Drenched from head to toe, Diana thanked me while drying her hair. I waved it off graciously, saying, it's all right. I'm glad I was here, otherwise, I don't know what you would have done, Diana explained, Tom left for work early this morning. There's something important waiting for him at the company. Tom ran his own construction company, not a large-scale one, but with a market value just over a hundred million. For ordinary people, that already classified as a wealthy family. I was about to comment on how busy Tom was when I turned around and coincidentally caught sight of Diana's provocative figure beneath her wet clothes. Her loose nightgown had become semi-transparent when soaked, allowing glimpses of her curves. Even her white lingerie was faintly visible under the bright light. Her alluring and graceful figure left me parched. 
I couldn't deny that Diana's resemblance to her sister was truly uncanny, reaching 100% in my eyes. I was both familiar and unfamiliar with this seductive body, unable to resist her temptation. Almost instinctively, I stood frozen in place, completely entranced. Brother-in-law, do I look beautiful? Diana giggled and stared at me, spinning in place. It was as if she was wholeheartedly showcasing her enchanting allure. Beautiful. I said, staring at her intently, nodding reluctantly. You look exactly like your sister, Diana giggled and asked, hee hee, how have you been spending your time alone since my sister disappeared? Are you lonely at night? I was taken aback by her direct question and hesitated before replying, loneliness is inevitable, considering your sister left without a word, would you like me to help alleviate your loneliness on behalf of my sister? Diana said with a mischievous smile as she opened her arms and embraced me. In that moment, my mind went blank, and I instinctively pulled her into my arms. I buried my head in her enticing curves, breathing in the intoxicating fragrance emanating from her body. I became completely lost in this tender embrace. After a passionate encounter, I took the opportunity to examine every scar on Diana's body. The results surprised me. There were no scars on the inner side of her thighs. Could it be that the alluring woman I held in my arms wasn't Alice after all? Could it be that they were truly twin sisters? I was completely stunned by this revelation, overwhelmed by a strong sense of guilt. I felt I had betrayed Tom, my brother. In a daze, I got up from the bed, dressed myself, and packed my belongings. Silently, I bought a train ticket to go back home. When I arrived at the train station in the late afternoon, I hadn't even boarded the train when I received a call from Tom. Seeing his name on the caller ID made my heart skip a beat. Oh no, I muttered under my breath, trembling as I answered the call. I thought to myself. Could it be that Tom found out about Diana and me? In a state of anxiety, unsure of how to explain myself, I pressed the answer button with trembling hands. George, what time did you leave? Was Diana home when you left? Why did she suddenly disappear? Tom's voice sounded anxious. What? I was momentarily stunned, then it finally sank in. You mean Diana is missing? She hasn't come home yet, yes, she hasn't returned, Tom replied, his voice filled with worry. Do her clothes and personal belongings still remain at home? A foreboding feeling suddenly arose within me. Yes, everything is still at home, Tom responded in a frantic tone. Where do you think she could have gone, I didn't know where she could have gone but I knew deep down that Diana's disappearance was identical to Alice's. When Alice left without a word, it was the same. She didn't take anything with her, and all her belongings and clothes were still at our home, as if she were still there. I even naively believed that Alice had just gone out to clear her mind and would come back to continue writing our future together. But now, it seemed that my belief was too naive. Realizing this, I hastily urged Tom, brother, don't panic. Check your bank account balance quickly, bank account? Tom scratched his head, not understanding what I meant. Why are you talking about bank accounts at a time like this? No, brother, listen to me, I quickly recounted my own experience. Then I urged him, quickly check your bank account balance, you see, just before Alice disappeared. She transferred all the money from my bank account at once. That's why I was worried that Tom might have been deceived. Just as I was urging Tom to check his bank account, he casually said, there's nothing to check. After I married Diana, we entrusted all our family's money to her, oh no, I thought, this is really bad. I asked, how much money is in your account, probably around 30 to 40 million, Tom replied uncertainly. Including the transfers I made before, it should be around 50 million, what? 50 million. I could hardly believe it. Tom, who controlled such a large company, was so careless as to entrust all the family's money to Diana. But then again, I realized that I was no different. Even after Alice disappeared, I never suspected that I had been deceived until recently. It was only a few days ago that I finally realized I had been fooled by Alice. With no intention of going home, I hailed a taxi and went straight to Tom's house. By the time I arrived, it was already past 11 in the evening. Tom was squatting on the couch, scratching his head. When he saw me, he immediately started rambling. 
Where could Diana possibly have gone at this time of night? I've even called the police, but there haven't been any reports of murders in the area, have you compared the process of Diana's disappearance with Alice's? I interrupted him, raising my suspicions. Have you noticed the similarities between their disappearances, what do you mean? Tom asked anxiously. Are you saying Diana's inexplicable disappearance is related to Alice's? Yes. I nodded solemnly. Furthermore, when Alice disappeared, she didn't take anything with her and didn't say anything. She just left without any explanation. The most important thing is, she took all my money. I got up and went to their bedroom to investigate. I found that Diana's clothes and cosmetics were still there, just like when Alice disappeared. After hearing my analysis, Tom finally began to suspect that he had been deceived. George, could it be that we were both fooled? Tom clenched his fists, grinding his teeth. You're right, we should check if there's any money left in our bank accounts, all right. Tom quickly took out his phone and logged into the online banking system to check his account. When he saw the balance was zero, Tom was so shocked that he almost fell to the ground. George, to be honest, when I handed the bank card to Diana, I had a backup plan. I thought even though the card was in her possession, the account opening documents were in my name, and the online banking access was in my hands. But I never expected. According to the account records, Diana had transferred all of Tom's money into her personal account in five different transactions. What surprised me even more was that she made the transfers on the night of the first day I visited their house. It was clear that Diana waited for Tom to get drunk and used his phone to transfer all the money while deleting all the notification messages. George, what should we do? Tom snapped out of his daze and quickly asked me. The money has been transferred, and she's gone. What else can we do? I stared at the phone, gritting my teeth. Let's go to her hometown right now, okay, I'll pack some clothes. Tom agreed, clenching his teeth, and quickly gathered some essentials. We got into the car and headed straight to Diana's hometown. After a long and exhausting journey, we finally arrived after a day and a night. Her hometown was a peaceful and quiet village, only half an hour's drive from the city center. Since I had been to Alice's hometown with her before, I didn't need to inquire about the address and went straight to her house. To my surprise, Alice's family home was tightly shut, with no sign of anyone, not even their old yellow dog. Where is everyone? Tom kicked the door in frustration. He muttered under his breath, this was all planned in advance. Even her parents were in on it, don't get angry. We're just here to visit some friends in the village. Let me ask around, I advised Tom and went to the supermarket in the village to buy some gifts before heading to Diana's neighbor's house. Their next-door neighbors were an elderly couple whose children had graduated and settled in the city. The couple chose to stay in their rural hometown, farming and enjoying retirement. The aunt recognized me and seemed surprised to see me. Are you George? She warmly gestured for me to take a seat. Yes, auntie, I'm George. It's about Alice. She went missing, and we haven't found her, so I came to see you and uncle, I pointed towards Alice's house and asked, where are my parents? Where did they go, oh, you probably haven't been in touch recently, auntie chuckled. They moved away a long time ago, huh? I looked puzzled. Where could this second child have moved, auntie shook her head. I don't know about that, auntie. Does Alice have a twin sister? Tom couldn't help but blurt out the question. Hearing this, Auntie looked at Tom with caution and then shifted her gaze to me. I thought it was strange how she was acting, so I smiled and said, Auntie, you don't have to hide it. We both know that Alice has a twin sister, he is Diana's husband. Diana went missing two days ago, and we came to her hometown to find her, Tom added. What? Auntie was even more surprised upon hearing this. Her hands holding the water glass began to tremble uncontrollably. I felt a sense of unease. What's going on? I asked, wondering what was happening. After a long pause, Auntie finally spoke slowly, trying to gather herself. Diana died in a car accident a year ago. You said she went missing two days ago. How is that possible? Could it be that Diana crawled out of her grave and married you? She said sarcastically. What? 
Tom was so shocked that he sat down on the ground. I, too, was completely stunned by what Auntie had just revealed. I couldn't understand how this could be possible. If Diana was dead, then who was the person I met at Tom's house the day before yesterday, I didn't dare to think further, feeling a chill run down my spine. After calming down for a while, I finally settled my mind, but the more I thought about it, the more fearful I became. Auntie, do you know where Diana is buried? After thinking for a long time, I felt it would be better to confirm it. Auntie fanned herself with her hand and glanced at me and Tom before nodding. All right, I can take you there. Following Auntie's directions, Tom and I drove for over ten minutes until we arrived at a solitary grave. But what I never expected was that we would encounter Alice there in the cemetery. She was standing in front of Diana's grave, her head lowered. There was no trace of surprise on her face when she saw us approaching. Instead, she seemed unusually calm. Alice! Auntie exclaimed in surprise. When did you come back, Auntie, you're here too. Alice's lips curled into a forced smile. I just arrived this morning, she glanced at me and Tom and added, I came specifically to wait for the two of you, huh? I furrowed my brow and stared at Alice, questioning, you already knew we were coming back, of course, if your intelligence isn't lacking, you would definitely come to visit my hometown, Alice chuckled. And you would surely discover that Diana actually died in a car accident a year ago, upon hearing Alice's words, I finally confirmed that Diana had indeed died in the car accident a long time ago. Then who was it that married Tom, I didn't need to say it, the answer was already clear. Why did you use Diana's identity to marry me? Tom gritted his teeth and demanded, why did you deceive me and take away my money, heh, Alice's laughter sounded somewhat tragic. She stared at me and Tom with anger and hysteria. Why? Because a year ago, the two of you hit and killed my sister and fled the scene, what, I was simply dumbfounded by the shock. I never expected that the victim of that car accident a year ago would be Diana, later. After understanding the whole story, I learned that Alice had meticulously planned her revenge against me and Tom. She first approached me under her own identity, married me, and gained my trust. Then she took away my money. Afterward, she used Diana's identity to get close to Tom. Here, I must mention that in order to exact revenge on me and Tom, Alice did not immediately cancel Diana's identity information. What followed was Alice marrying Tom in the name of Diana. The scars on her body were intentionally drawn. After the truth of the matter was exposed, both Tom and I received the punishment we deserved. Seven years later, we were released from prison, but instead of being greeted by family and friends, it was Alice who awaited us. She stood in front of a luxury car, accompanied by a little girl, and waved at us. I was pregnant with a child back then. And I'd been living well with the money you both left behind, she said. Goodbye, take care of yourselves, and don't try to find me again, then, she drove away with the little girl, disappearing at the end of the street. From that moment on, neither Tom nor I ever saw her again.